So let me talk about that again, how it takes place in the heart. Listen to these scriptures. Conviction, that's the intellectual component. Here's what Peter says when he's preaching the gospel, Acts 2.37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. That's conviction. They had heard that Jesus was the Christ, that he lived, that he died, that he was risen from the dead. They had the facts. They were cut to the heart. They said, brothers, what shall we do? Then comes the emotional water, illumination. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. And then there was the internalization, again, the volitional part. If you believe in your heart that God has raised him dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes, and that makes a man righteous before God. The heart is the place that God deals with it, it, man. It's really a distraction to deal with others. We try to change people from the outward, and God says, let's go for the inward. Let's work from the inside out, and that's what God does. And that's genuine conversion. That's the battleground that we're talking about. There needs to be that clarity about who Jesus is and what he did. Be clear on that. Secondly, there needs to be confidence that comes that I'm his child because I've been drawn by the Spirit of God and I've made that commitment. And then that certainty comes that I have eternal life. I belong to him. So that's what we want for everyone that not only listens to the lectures but shares them with others. Clarity about who Jesus is, confidence, confident that you're his child, and certainty that you have eternal life. That's conversion, but again, I want you to understand conversion not only happens in the heart, but here's how it affects the heart. God gives us a new heart. Ezekiel 36, 26, God says, I'll give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit in you. I'm going to take from you, remove from you, the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. That's conversion. God takes up his residence in our heart. Sometimes we say to children, ask Jesus into your heart. What does that mean? God takes up his residence in his heart. Listen, he, God sets his seal of ownership on us. God puts his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guarantee of what is to come. When you're converted, the Holy Spirit resides permanently in your heart. That's what it means to have Jesus come into your heart. God confirms in our hearts that we're now his children. Galatians 4, 6. It's because you really are God's children that God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts to cry, Father, dear Father. That's the witness of the spirit you know. And I ask people sometimes, do you have that witness of the spirit? Do you know that you know? Is there that, that internal thing? It's very subjective, but you know when you have the witness of the Spirit. So God takes up his residence in our heart. God gives us a new heart. God confirms in our hearts that we're his children, and God pours his love on our heart. Romans 5.5, 5, God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. He pours it out in our hearts. And I know for myself and many others, a very unloving person before I came to know Christ. And not only do you start loving God, but you start loving people and seeing people differently. Many other changes take place at the moment of conversion. In fact, someone has cataloged 32 distinct things that happen the moment you receive Christ and are genuinely converted. Beautiful study. But the important thing that I want you to understand is what God does. He starts his work from the inside out and gives you a new heart, takes up his residence in your heart, confirms in your heart that you're his child, pours out his love in your heart. 
So the question is, have you had a genuine conversion experience? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself to see if you were in the faith or not. Do you have the genuine article, born again of the Spirit of the living God, and you receive that new heart? Probably most of you have. That's why you're listening to the lecture. If you haven't, I urge you to place your faith and trust where God has placed your sin on Jesus Christ. Receive him as your Savior and Lord. Now, that does not solve all your problems. Didn't solve all my problems. And many times, people know that they're a Christian, but their hearts are still troubled. There's a second thing that usually happens in fact, most often happens to people, especially if they've received Christ when they're a child. And I believe a child can receive Christ. Our son received Christ when he was five years old, never ever doubted that, and it was just as real as it could be. His understanding, because he understood, we, t we taught him who Jesus was. He had that desire to know Jesus, and uh, he received him as Savior. So in the next section, I want to talk about after we've been converted, we can still have a troubled heart. What is one of the major reasons, not the only one, but a major reason why the heart can still be troubled? We will do that in our next lecture. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.